So, afternoon, evening, whenever I put this out. Hello, everybody. Obviously, it's myself, uh, Cypher Sigma Toys and Screen Time, and with my partner in crime, as always, yeah, wherever we always go, is AJ. So, thank you, AJ, for joining me again. Um, my pleasure. <laughs> so, right, so, yeah, I might so, know um, some more than you this time. Yeah, you probably, the comic-wise, you, you always know lots more than me. Um, obviously, but it will be an interesting conversation. We have been itching to have this for a while now. So Well, I have. I don't know about you, but... No, no, no. I've, I've <laughs> had quite some revelations watching some of this stuff, so I, it's good to talk to someone because my wife just looked at me blank when I talked to her about Robocop. So. Yeah. So, yes, so as the top would say, we are talking about anything and everything Robocop. So, as I normally do in these videos, I will give you kind of a little rundown of how it was all created, and then we will go from there. So, in the early 80s, that's the 1980s, um, a man named Ed Neumeyer came up with the concept of Robocop. All the idea, he, he was on the set of Blade Runner when this happened, so very early 80s, as Blade Runner was, I think it was 1982. Um so he wanted to make a movie combining business and action. You can see my hands. So that's when he started um, coming up with the idea of how he could um, produce this into a movie. He then met Michael Miner, who was the other writer on the movie. And these two then started to put the idea of Robocop through the studios, writing it and so much. Um, they didn't get very, very, they didn't get very far until obviously Terminator come out early in the 80s, obviously Terminator being a success, so in showing androids and robots can be very popular. This then basically got the studios a kick up the backside to let them do it. Um, obviously, they like, brought on director Paul Van Hoven to direct it, and that's obviously where it then sprung into life. Um, it obviously has multiple animated TV series, comics, um, a... a live action tv series in the 90s obviously the remake in 2014 um and i don't think they've said anything now about a new series or that as of yet but no there's um, there's been there's always been talk of a new film yeah. of a new of a, of a you know a sort of return there was a look there was there was talk a little while ago and ironically neil blomkamp was was name was attached okay. to it for a while i say ironically because of the aliens five stuff yeah, as yeah, well. yeah. he was attached to it never happened um and then he was attached to a robocop and and there was talks of doing a, a a new film that dismissed everything and just came straight after or set after but years later after that very first initial movie um and and unfortunately it's never come to pass no uh, for one reason or another yeah so i thought we'd start off with basically explaining so people who have watched these before know obviously there's about seven years between myself and aj so we have very new and ex different experiences so i thought we'd start off with like if you wanted to go first like how you got introduced to robocop and something just so people can get that understanding so might highlight some of your points later on all right so i obviously i was about 11 I would have been about 11 when Robocop came out. I was born in 76. Robocop came out in 87. Obviously, I was way too young to see it at the cinema. But my first actual... I was aware of it. I was aware of Robocop. Um, I'd seen it in film magazines and things like that. Um, but I think, I think as it went, I, I was introduced to it through the movie adaptation comic book okay. first um i will show because i have got those comic books and, and ironically um those early comic books that, that that introduced me to robocop was actually the punisher okay and this uk edition of the punisher this is um that the reprints the circle of blood storyline but in it, they, they threw in as a backstory the Robocop um, movie adaptation comics in black and white. Okay. Um, and it was spread over maybe, I think it was three issues. So you had it in that one, you had it in issue two, and culminated in issue three there. And that was the introduction to Robocop for me. 
And um, obviously then the film came out and being being the age I was, 11, you've got this sort of uber-violent movie, it, it hits all the right notes, do you know what I mean? It, it's like you feel like, like with Terminator, you feel like you're watching something that you shouldn't have really been watching at that age, especially back then. It's a lot different now and culture and that sort of a thing. But back then, and, and yeah, and I don't know, I just... I. I from that moment, from that first film, I gained a love for this this IP through the good and the bad. I was I was very accepting of, you know, I mean, we'll talk about the films and you know, obviously nothing is there is nowhere near matches that first film. But there's a lot of love and, and things that I get out of the other 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 projects, even though I know that they're not particularly good or deemed good, yeah. you know. But yeah, it's just, just it's funny because, um, well, no, I, I, I can't do that, and it's, it's, it's not relevant to this. I won't talk. About it. <laughs> it's about the punisher link, but I won't do okay. that. Talk. Yeah, no, you can do it if you want. It's all good. No, no, no. It's all right. It's, it's, it's me talking punisher. Sorry, the puppies still yeah. want some screen time. Yes, you want some screen time, don't you? That's right. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of fans out there. I mean, my dog's over there, so he's asleep. So I'm. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. No. So yeah, uh, uh, as obviously we said, the age difference. You were eleven. I was four. So I, I was very, very young. Um, for me, kind of the realization of RoboCop came in the animated series. So <coughs> I put that up. So this was mm. obviously aimed at kids. So it was aimed at all, as I knock everything over. Um, so that's what was aimed at me, which is quite surprising because obviously my kind of introduction was the animated series or the first one yeah the first one these are one. these are actually bootleg versions of um, really alpha remember. command and the the original animated really? series but i do have a thingy release as well like that of it yeah um which ain't the complete thing that's only about five episodes in there yeah, it's, I think they did it in three volumes, and the third one's really, really expensive. So if you have the yeah. third volume, just be aware you can get a lot of money for that. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of where I came in. And it's funny because obviously this whole conversation is when AJ gifted me the TV series, I actually watched it with my dad and forgot all about it, forgot it even existed. So you I watched, you yeah, watched, I watched it all. I watched I everything. Oh, really, really liked it. Brings back actually quite a lot of fond memories. So quite, yeah. I came in at the animated series, then the live action TV series, and then I saw the film. So I'm a little bit in reverse order of people from how okay, so, I was exposed to it. But that might have, I don't know, how, how that, I mean, you can talk about that in a minute, how that yeah. works for you. Because obviously I've gone in, in the direction opposite, which is the first film. And as the projects come, I, I've seen them. But it's interesting your 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 perspective your perspective on it will be interesting in that you were uh, um, introduced to this it through another another direction. Yeah. No, no, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think I think it must be my age and in my experience because I'll explain it later. But how I like stuff, it's very similar to how I like the aliens and Terminator trilogies and stuff like this. But I'll elaborate on that later. I don't want to yeah. <laughs> don't want to ruin that at this point. But yeah, okay. So that's how we got into it. So should we talk about RoboCop one? Yeah. No, oh, there it is. You probably got the better edition. I'm sure you got some steel books of it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't get to them though. They're covered in boxes. No. I mean, boxes covering them all up. But that's the special edition from Arrow. Right, uh, yeah. I'm not a fan of the 4K. I will say that I, I don't think this film warrants a 4K release. That 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 crisp picture I don't think is is required here for this movie. No. Although it looks great, Robocop Two looks fantastic in 4K, and it's okay. a film that I wanted in 4K, um, but not Robocop. I know odd, but uh, I'll come to that. You know. Okay. No, but no, yeah, no. so Robocop One. Yeah, not quite sure. I mean, I mean, if we, if people who do or don't know, I mean, if if you get hold of this, so this is basically four episodes, about five hours worth, and it it basically breaks down every scene within the movie, more or less, with 
every single living cast member. I think there is a few. I was going to say the old man. I'm trying to think of the the oh, the businessman who gets shot in the legs. Yeah, there's there's a yeah. few people that aren't around. Uh, Mig Miguel Ferrer. That's Miguel him. Ferrer. I I was remembering from Hot Shots. That's I can't yeah. get that image out of my head. Hot Shots part the is it? War, war. I yeah. love it. Or something like <laughs> yeah, <that. laughs> with the handkerchief and the keep blowing. Yeah. He's also in. He's also got a small role in Star Trek Six. Star Trek, okay. It's I mean, been it's been a lot time. of other stuff, but he pops up yeah. as you know, yeah, as, as a helmsman in Star Trek Six as well. Is it Star Trek Six or is it Star Trek? No, I might be wrong here. Yeah? Might be Star Trek Three. Mm. I think it's the one where they go after the Enterprise. They chase the Enterprise. I think it's Three. Okay. Yeah, I think it's Star Trek Three. Sorry, I'm getting my Star Treks mixed up there, but there we go. No, it's all right. <laughs> so you know better than I do. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, it, it was. I mean, if you watch that documentary, you see how how chaotic making that film was, and all the problems they had, and a lot of things. And it it, it could potentially you could class it as like lightning in a, in a bottle. It was the right movie at the right time with the right people. But I, I mean, I, the fact I saw it very later than when it was out, and still really really enjoy it. It is very much up there. Um, and not just because obviously the hyper violence and stuff like this. I think there is the core story and how it is portrayed and by everyone involved actually adds to it. And I think there are elements of that which are lost in the future ones. But yeah, yeah. And, and also you got you got, you got that that socio political kind of um, yes humor that sort of. Um, it, where it digs at this satire, it's very satirical about its time and the sort of Reagan administration and, you know, and, and um, yeah, cor corporate at the time and all this sort of a thing. Yeah, it you know, which is what Verhoeven was very good at because obviously mm. it was, you know, it, bringing that in, that sort of thing, um, it, very much the same with Starship Troopers had that same, yeah. same kind of, of thing to it. Um yeah, it, it was, but but at its core, the the you know, like I said, take away the 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 violence and all that, you are left with a a a, a very sort of um, emotional story of of a man, you know, the loss of his identity. I mean, it's all very clever in the setup of the film because, you know, he's put there, he's chosen, he's been yeah. chosen for this project, for the RoboCop project. Um, in a sense, you know, um, OCP were moving people from other areas of, of the city to Metro South, mm. where where the crime's at its worst, in the hopes that police officers were going to get killed so they could put them into this kind of a programme and use yeah. them. So, so, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's very done in a very subtle way, just lie, a few lines here and there, but but it's all been planned, so to speak, and these people have been um, essentially psychologically... Um, a psychological profile has been done on these people to warrant who would be the best fits for the these these kind of um, yeah candidates program, yeah. well not government programs but corporate programs. Do you know what I mean? No, no, no. I um I very much agree. I mean, going probably or, or to the point of the hyper violence that a lot of people talk about in this movie. I mean, when he gets gunned down. I mean, it happens, I think, about 50 minutes into it. If I remember from the documentary, they did highlight that, which I didn't realise it was that far into it. I thought he got turned into Robocop a lot quicker from my memory. Yeah. Um, but I think the fact you got to witness that made you kind of sympathise a little bit more with him. And it, 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 because obviously so many movies of that era, you, you kind of meet these people and a lot of stuff was assumed. And then, you know, they go on to do whatever they want to do. Whereas in this movie, like, you, you know, you only see, I think he, he meets Anne Lewis, they mm. get coffee, and then literally it's the car chase, and then he gets gunned down. And that's kind of the four major scenes, I think. Or well, probably five, because he, go, he goes into the back, doesn't he? He goes to the back and gets his locker and everything else. So you don't yeah. actually get that much time with him. But no. I think of seeing what he went through, kind of, you get why he is, why he is. And I mean, it's, it's I think it's very clever of a movie where everybody, you know, Robocop is a good guy and Kurtwood Smith is the bad guy, even though the main bad guy is OCP, but it's never seen as that. It is this human kind of element that yes. they like to play with. 
which I find really, really good. You know, it's very, and I think re-watching it specifically now and obviously for this is you pick up a lot more of this stuff of how these actors and how the story goes and mm. th there's even stuff like this of uh, i know skipping ahead but you know you skip forward to the remake he gets in the car he's blown up and that's it there's like it's so little t you know you, there's so much you know the yeah. touch of it, it, it you don't get as much time to kind of sympathize with the character and see what he goes through no you don't um not taken away i do like joel kinnaman so but <laughs> but that's the story for later I, I don't mind him as an actor myself yeah not so much back then not <laughs> <quite>. wow <laughs> oh, yeah he, i mean he, he's done a lot of good stuff i just feel he's a good actor that gets put sometimes in the wrong role or yeah. or he hasn't found the right place but but <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I mean, well, obviously going back to it, yeah, I mean, when he then gets turned into Robocop, like how they came up with a lot of the stuff. Like, so if anybody sees it behind the scenes, you see like Robocop, he moves with his chest first, and that was obviously he was working with a coach and everything. Um, Peter Weller, um, and obviously there were a lot of, he wanted to do a lot of over exaggerated stuff, but obviously the suit, if, if anybody, you know, it was horrendous for him to get in. It was, I think, in like the 80s or something, degrees, yeah. whatever. In I'm trying to think of where it was. Was it Cat Houston? Oh, I'm trying to remember where it, is, where it was. I think it was like. Yes, I think you're right there. Yeah. It, yeah, was, it was, um, I, know, I don't know if it was on this one. I know that in one of them, the it, 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 I don't know if it was on the sequel, but it smelled like they he said it smelled like baby sick. <laughs> Yeah, having the mask covering it, yeah. smells me sick all the time. <laughs> I don't remember him saying that in the documentary, so it may be on two or I think three. That was but... not the sequels where that was the case. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I can imagine of if you, I mean, it, you really have to like see the documentary to experience of what you had to go through to get into this suit and then be stuck in it for probably like 10 hours a day. And I think the first fitting was like 12 hours. If I remember from time, start yeah. to finish, yeah, and by the time they put him in it and got him out, it was pitch black and they couldn't film. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and obviously they had to film certain elements, like in the car. I could only have, and when he's walking down the stairs in the yeah. nightclub, he ain't got the bottom half of the suit on. Yeah, only the top half because he couldn't get downstairs in it, and. Yeah. Obviously, couldn't get into a car with it on. <laughs> no, I, but, but I mean, even I, I, I think again another realization of rewatching this movie. Like he walks like robots kind of do nowadays, and or, or like you know, there's no sci-fi. You know, whereas in like the 2014, the later robots, you know, they can run, jump off, and they're running like almost Superman. And they're like, they're like the 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 billion dollar man million dollars. yeah exactly it? and it, i think that there are maybe if, if they took the inspiration from like terminating that because he was even though he was human he was kind of quite clunky i think how on he was specifically in the, mm -hmm. the first movie and so look how he worked and because obviously they incorporated that it it makes him seem more of a machine but obviously there is the human element mm -hmm. um inside and yeah and just just those bits of as i say re-watching it or i i Say so many realizations of how much this is a good movie. Uh, whether that's there's just bad movies out now, and I'm just making that comparison, or just well, no, it's, it's, it is it is a good movie. It's, it's you know the film's got lasting appeal. It's got one of the you know I always say the 1980s and, and 1990s that was the time when cinema, when film was at its peak, in that you had everything started coming together everything every element the, the directing the writing the acting the special effects the sound design the musical scores everything seemed to just just you know for, for a period of time for a decade and a half everything just just came together perfectly and and, and, and ideas just flourished in that in that period um, I don't know if it was because of advancements in technology with the ideas mm -hmm. and this sort of thing all of a sudden things could be done but you know for me robocop is is it's up there with terminator and aliens and predator for for for, for design you know for you know when when i think of um concept designs for you know on screen i, I don't want to use the word monsters but do you know what i mean you got you got aliens which is like perfect design 
you got the Predator, which is a perfect design. You got Terminator, perfect, and you got RoboCop, perfect. These things are just, just, just knocked it out of the park visually, straight away. You know, and and shouldn't be. You know, it's one of the things that I've got issues with with the RoboCop remake is the redesign of RoboCop because RoboCop didn't need redesigning. No. It's perfect as he is the look of him is perfect as he is you know what i mean you can't you can't better it and it was it, all this stuff just came together and and this is one of those films that you know on on face value this film should have been a a a, a flop or a you know straight to video i mean robocop just the title itself yeah. just just screams stupidness in a sense but you know the, the film was a big hit it was a huge hit yeah, I mean, it was it was made by uh, seventeen point oh thirteen point seven million is the budget. Obviously, it was under ten if you know from a documentary and kept getting pushed up. Yeah, um, so. it made fifty three point four million, so almost forty million back in the day, and I think it's grossed over a hundred million now. Um, a lot of the actors and actresses still get red residual checks and stuff from it. So, yeah, big hit for its time. Yeah. You know, it, it it was, and I, I mean, obviously, because it went on to spawn what it did. Mm. You know, and and I know a lot of people won't go beyond that first RoboCop film, and and I do understand that. I, I get that 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 psyche, that psychology, that that thought process, and you know, even though I love, yeah, you know, I'm very critical of them, but I I just love everything RoboCop. <laughs> No, no, I could get. It. I mean, I like most of the stuff. There are are a few miss hits. Yeah, there are. There are. Like I said, I mean, love them. Um, but um, yeah, uh, there is a lot of good stuff I think in there, and it's it, it's funny when you read. I mean, I'll get to it when we get to the certain bits. There are stuff what that was panned or not carried on, but then you look online and look at reviews, and most people weren't giving it a chance. And like you've said, like I, I like I understand why people don't want to give the others a chance. You know when you have a movie and you like it, it's very precious to you. Um, yeah. Same I mean, thing you said. Because this, this year isn't going to be being gushing about Robocop because I will be critical of every every element of Robocop. But I also understand, I, I understand why people, I, I don't, I understand why people don't like what came after, but I'm not sure people understand. Yeah, no, no. Why. Don't like what came after um, properly, if that makes sense, in a psychological aspect. See, I, I will say the thing with RoboCop. When I talk about RoboCop, it's it's a one and done film. It's a one and done story, and this is where the problem lies with it. It's not to do with the fact that it became less violent, more kiddie friendly. Um, it's got nothing to do with that sort of that. That it's got nothing to do with that whatsoever. Um, it's literally to do with the fact that the story was told. Okay, yeah. It, much akin to Highlander, right? The Robocop story is about a, a, a person um, completely losing his identity and his journey to rediscovery. Yeah. You know, hence why the film ends with, with when the old man says to him, um, nice shooting, you know, what's your name? And he goes, you know, Murphy, Murphy. with it, Mile, because he's, 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 he's now become that that person so where do you go where do you take the story after that right it, it's very difficult to do because his story's told his story's told so all you go into after that is into either uh, you know a bigger badder robot let's have him go up against the bigger bad badder robot which is what they've done yeah. or or we go down the police procedural route let's do and which is what the tv series done let's do a police series a, with Robocop in the main right, role, you know, um, and, and and that's 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 the only options they had. I say that's the only options they had. There is there is another option because I've always constantly thought about this and how how do you make a Robocop sequel? You've got to do it about his wife. Okay, it's yeah. got to be his wife and kids and he or his kid, child, his son, and his connection to them. And, you know, obviously I'm not a screenwriter or anything, but that, that for me, that's got to be the heart of your film. That's got to be the, 
the character. That's got to be that, that, you know, like the first film is, is him on this journey of rediscovery. The second film needed, needed really to focus on that. And when you go into the second film, you do have a small element of it at the yeah, beginning. But they, but they cut it off so quickly, don't yeah. they? Yeah, it's like, this is wife. I don't want to see you. Yeah, he's stalking her, whatever. He's like, you know, <laughs> exactly. stalking her police car. And and OCP tells him to basically tell her that you're not who you are, blah, blah, blah. Get rid of her, basically. She's going to sue us. And and then it's done. It's done. And that, that storyline's has side, gone. Yeah. And not only that, it's kind of like they seem to forget when moving into the sequel that – Hey, he's actually a person now. Mm. He's actually a person, and they—it's like they revert him back to RoboCop, mm. the RoboCop he was before becoming the person again. It's like he lost that, you know. So they right. didn't know how to handle. They really didn't know how to handle the character beyond the first film. I don't know. I, I I definitely do agree. I mean. Do you want to go movies first or do you want to go chronological order? Because obviously TV series came out after the first movie before the second one is very uh, short. So no, it can... didn't. It didn't. Yeah, it did. well, according to IMDb, it came out in 19... Oh, yeah. 94. That was a t I thought it was a TV series, live action TV series, the animated. No. I thought this came out in... 1990, 1988. Oh my! No, you're wrong. Unless I, unless I, well, let me have a look. I've written... You've got RoboCop you know... two. You got RoboCop two that was about ninety one. I think RoboCop three or five was ninety three, but it was delayed. Yeah, it was RoboCop... done in ninety one, and there was delayed two years. The RoboCop TV series was about ninety four. <laughs> The, uh, um, I'm not sure the years of the animated series. That's yeah, that's 198. No, yeah, that's what I was talking. So that. Uh, oh, okay, all right. Sorry. That was 1980. So yeah, we're getting confused. So. All right. So yes, yeah, so we had movie. Action. Movie one was 97. Then this came out in 98 between movies one and two. Yeah. Then obviously you had 1990 for Robocop 2, 93, yeah. as you've said. Obviously, it was done a lot earlier. 94 was the live action TV series, which you gave me. Then obviously 98 was Alpha Command, which you have. And then 2001 is the TV movie series ish. Start yeah, Robocop 2001. Yeah, that's the one. And that's actually you... the first one. That's the first. That was. I'll come on to that. That's my first yeah. introduction to that. Okay. But do you want to quickly go over this, and so then we can go back to the movies? Yeah, as... go, on, go over the yeah. cartoon series because I'll be honest, the cartoon series I've not watched for a long, long time. Right. Whereas you've recently watched them, haven't you? Not. Yeah, I I rewatched it. So I've got the first. Well, I said this. So I've got the box set that has what is essentially the first two discs so like aj's but it's missing episode eight and has episode nine on it so i was missing three episodes but they're all on youtube both series on there so i've watched them all yeah and it is it, it's a fun watch because obviously i watched it as a kid so that's what i remember going back to obviously this was an era where they were doing it for toys that's but right, it yeah. was it was obviously down because it was the late eighties. Obviously, they were cutting them down because obviously studios were it, basically encouraging them to have a good meaning and a good message. So that's why he is a bit more kid friendlier in it. But the figures that go with it, the good guy, the good guys are featured. The, well, the main guy and obviously um, Lewis are in the first episode, and then all the other good guys are in the final episode. So it's really, really strange how to introduce a toy line. You've got characters that aren't in it until the last episode, and then you've mm. brought toys out of them. Um, I so say it's a fun watch. The only thing this, I feel, is different to any other Robocop, it kind of in introduces the romantic theme between him and Lewis. They go out to dinner one episode, and there's a few things like that, and that that's never really been featured in anything else. No, so yeah. that's just why I was bringing that up. <laughs> You know, it's, it's an, an interesting 
that's an interesting concept that you know um <laughs> to, yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean it is and obviously then the figure uh, where we go and then obviously these are the three of the figures so you have to oh, so you have the two two of the bad guys which are which are, are featured in the first episode they're called the vandals and they came with caps so you could fire right, and i've got really really wrong there yeah <laughs> and obviously this is the dr magnamera which is like the evil scientist of the tv yeah, series I, I, I did actually have a robocop back then yeah a robocop figure a little robot i think he had a red the visor was always red red yeah, yeah. i don't have any that's a surprising how much i like the series i don't have any figures but i do want to get the necker one so hopefully by the end of the year i'll i'll keep an eye out and if i can get the necker I haven't even, I've got some figures here, some of my stuff. Well, I say some, I've got all of it. I haven't got too much in the way of Robocop collectibles, but I do have, so I'll just show this This here. I do have that, that big one there. That's cool. Which, which is the size of your crow. you got a crow. Yeah, like that. yeah. Um, Does he talk? Yeah, but the battery's dead. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, look. Okay. Yeah, he does. Yeah, so yes. <laughs> that's pretty cool, though. I think that's that like 18 cool. inch. 18 yeah, inch. Something like that. yeah, it's pretty sweet. I did actually have, I did have his gun as a BB gun. I remember you saying, and then you sold it, didn't you? I thought you sold it on. Yeah. yeah, so gutted. But yeah, I have that as a figure, and also have a um, Edge Row Nine, yeah. bit dusty, I know. Um, but he gets he, keep, he keeps getting called different names throughout it. If you've watched the animated series, he gets called like two, Ed Two Hundred Seven, Ed Two Hundred Eight. So, I... yeah, I know. It's Ed Two Hundred Nine. Yeah, there is a button on this somewhere. Where where it is uh, for the life of me? Yeah. All right. Oh. oh no! I think those batteries need changing. To comply. Oh yeah, where he puts down the gun and then shoots the guy. Yeah. So again, sound. The wife bought me that one a few years back. No, that's that that's cool. I mean, and, and I do have it's still it's unopened, but I have the which is quite new. These are from Jada, okay. Jada cars. So it's the the um, full Taurus police car. Okay, that's cool. I've not seen that before. Yeah, I mean that's available in like Smith's Toys and places okay. like that. You know, um, but yeah, just one I've never opened. Well, I know you Again, like that was that's that pretty recent. That's that's the only that's all I have in the way of Robocop collectibles. That's, that's, that's okay. I don't have any of the Necker figures. I do look at them from time to time, but I don't have any. No. Well, who knows? Who knows what the future holds? That's right. Who knows? But yeah, so it's been like I said, the animated series fresh for you, but it's been some time for me since I last saw saw that. No, no, that, I mean that's funny. It was short-lived. I mean, it was. I could, I could see why it didn't do that well. It was just to pump out toys and come in a year after RoboCop and what you've explained. It's very different to the the the, the very hardcore, bloody, gory RoboCop. A lot of people aren't going to be that interested in it and wanting to get it for their kids. So, I can see that's probably why it just didn't do well. No, I can see kids enjoying it, but obviously adults downwards ain't gonna. Yeah, you know I mean, it ain't for them. Yeah. It is for kids. It's that era where you had like Rambo, yeah, Rambo cartoons and things like that. Do you know what I mean? These properties that were so um, much stuff was <laughs> like yeah, turned into kids properties kids. that were turned into cartoons. I suppose even like Alien, Alien and Predators were all like the different toys and then yeah, how kids toys, yeah. like that. Right. But obviously, they didn't have any cartoons. It was all for the film. So yeah, but that's another subject. I know you. <laughs> that's true that's right that is cool so shall we shift shift forward as you've already said so we're going to robocop 2 and obviously kane the new bad guy so to speak yes yeah, so I, I recently watched robocop 2 myself because i had i did get the the 4k version which is 
somewhere on, on one of my shelves. Hmm. I don't know where. It's up there somewhere. I'm not, uh, yeah. So I recently got... So, so like I said, Robocop 1, um, I, I weren't happy with the 4K transfer. I, I think it, look, it works better, grittier, because mm. of the gritty filmmaking and the gritty nature of the film. But when you get into Robocop 2, you, you shift to a more, especially beginning of the film, you've got more of a um, luminescent colouring and all this sort of thing in the film, um, much akin to... Batman and Robin, I want to say, in in, in colour wise, and obviously the Robocop suit was changed to be a lot more blue in colour. Yeah. Um, and as a four K, that picks up that that colour nicely. Um, now, as you know, Robocop Two was um, it, it was worked on by Frank Miller. Yeah. Um. Who actually worked on Robocop two and three? Um, but obviously Frank Miller, being um, comic book writer, those who don't know, um, who wrote things like The Dark Knight Returns, you know, the Batman, the famous, well, probably the most famous Batman story um, out there. One of the most famous Batman stories out there um, was brought in as as scriptwriter on on as well, to do the story of Robocop 2. And it wasn't very good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I think you liked Kane, didn't you? I think you said when you, well, I think in a previous conversation, you quite liked you, the idea of Kane as the bad guy. And if memory uh, says, Kane, the white make it. I, what I liked about Kane, Kane scared the crap out of me. Okay. As a kid in 91. Like I said, you got to understand that sensitivities weren't like they are now. And kids are desensitized to everything. There was, you know, I grew up on the Terminator, and um, you know, going back to the mid eighties for Terminator, probably nine, ten when I saw that sort of film, and and there was an element of that 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 sort of unstoppable machine that the that just keeps coming, keeps coming. And there was a, a it, it was scary. It was a scary idea, right? As a young kid watching that. And Kane is is it, there's an element to Kane that that did the same that had the same impact, and part of it is is uh, down to the way it was, he was filmed, primarily the scene where he's in the warehouse. Okay. And you got the mayor there. You got the yeah, mayor yeah. and the bad guys and the young kid, and that's the scene where the young kid gets killed and. Kane's girlfriend gets killed by Kane, and and the way it's filmed in that he's it's he's shrouded in darkness just with his lights shining, yeah. all shadowy, um, and then when he goes up to his girlfriend or the girl, and she's like all like touching him, yeah, in, yeah, in, in you know, and, and then he. he he just sort of flits and, and kills her. Just, you know, there was this, this un, that's unstoppable nature, this machine that just won't stop, that is relentless and will go after you no matter what. <coughs> so, so in that sense, it really worked for me. It was effective. I'm okay. not saying necessarily it was an effective design of a, of a, of a, of a character. Um, Cause I much prefer like Ed 209. Yeah. The design. Um, but it, it worked on that sort of, psychological level of, of fear it had that element to it no no i can see i mean obviously this is where my age comes into it i mean i never really recalled to the only elements of two i remember is it, it featured drugs and robocop <laughs> kind of got ripped apart that's all i could really remember um and obviously yeah. kane for me is ripper from last action hero so I cannot not yeah. get that image out of my head because that's where I think probably, oh, yeah, that would have been kind of the first introduction to the actor I I come across. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's very 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 different. I mean, I don't know. I mean, having I like the drug act aspect of it. I feel like that could have been played a bit more into it. But yeah, when it was when he turned into the robot and what he said was good, but then when he's fighting RoboCop, it's very. Just reminds me of Jason and the Argonauts style and very dated. 
yeah, it's very um, um, small, small um, <coughs> um, sort of stop motion -y kind of aspect to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but then, you know, I, I agree at the end of the film. It's one of those films where, yeah, you've got elements like that, but then you've got other, you know, the puppetry, the puppetry of Robocop in the points where he's been torn apart and he's just a torso with a head, you know, superb. Yeah, really definitely. Good. Really good puppetry there. Um, you know, I can't fault that. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's not a good film. It's not a good film. It's like I said, even though I love this franchise um, and I can watch them and I get a certain enjoyment out of them, it's a very sluggish movie. It's, it's very, the pacing is is horrendous in mm. Robocop 2. But there's some good ideas in there. There's a, some good action set pieces in there as well. You know, the bit where he's hanging onto the side of the truck and things like that yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look really good. Um, but again, like I said, they just didn't know how to handle this character in, in yeah. a sequel. They didn't know what to do with him um, <clears throat> because you need that, that, that heart, you need that emotion, you need that human element, which you don't get, which is, which, you know, it does bug me that I'm watching the beginning of this film and you've got the stuff with his wife and this is the stuff that the film needed to give you that element. Um, and I'm not saying you do a film, you know, you, you can have that as the B story to the A story. Do you know what I mean? You, you yeah. can intertwine them stories, but to, to, to just dismiss that after about 10 minutes into the film and, and forget the fact that he's actually a human again is, is, is crazy. No. Me. I mean, I, th I think there's a lot of elements like that for two. I mean, the old man who, from one, seems he's got a bit of a heart, basically right. turns, turns into a, 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 a part of my an asshole, basically. Yeah, from two to three. yeah, from two, and then obviously yeah, I'll explain later why he was in three. But yeah, he just it was uh, like, hang on, what's happened here? Yeah, um, no, again, he's again bad writing. Yeah, and I mean, like character, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, so to stop our animation, I think it was just a bit too much. I mean, in one, it was done very well. I mean, there wasn't too much interaction with Ed 2100 just because how he was designed and him falling down the stairs, I thought was quite funny. I mean, I never even realized he used animal sounds for him, yeah. like the roaring yeah. and the pigs, something like that. And even the, when he's in the boardroom, that's a full life um, mock up. So that worked quite well. But yeah, two, I, uh, yeah, I wasn't. I mean, I say I like the drug aspect. I like the beginning bit of it. It just got seemed to get a bit worse as we went on. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's not yeah. a good, film. not a good film. But I wanted it in 4K. Yeah, no, no, I don't blame. It. I mean, say so it's nice. I mean, I've obviously upgraded to DVD and say so they look better. Um, I'm trying to think how much it. I mean, it was made on a, almost double the budget or double the budget of the first movie, so 25 to 30 million, and it only made 45 and a half million yeah. so 15 just made over 15 million which isn't a lot taking account that's how much the first, more than the first film might cost to make um, no that's, yeah cool then shall we switch forward to robocop 3 yeah this film had massive delays massive delays when it it's yeah i mean if people don't know it was made in like 2000 uh, 2001 1991 and then wasn't released until 1993 um major points obviously um and lewis nancy allen she's obviously killed off that was leaked a year before it was even out mm -hmm. um, and, I, and i didn't even know they made a robocop game and released yeah. it a year early that's right yeah <laughs> and it had the whole story of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> good marketing genius yeah which is it's funny when you look at it now because obviously we never had pete weller because he was in a he couldn't do the role because he was had other obligations it was another movie he was trying to do because he had you know had basically pushed for that when you looked it got delayed anyway they should have just delayed it and let him come back but well yeah that's it but um it's it's oh. see i think robocop 3 is it's got a solid idea right and, and interestingly robocop 3 is actually set up in robocop 2 
there's all the talk of you know um new detroit and that isn't it yeah yeah and starting moving these people out getting you know what i mean it you see the these sort of seeds of it being sprinkled and that's obviously frank miller going through from two to three um so the whole idea the whole story of the the um oh, what's the word i'm looking for um oh, i'm drawing a blank in my head when you start moving poorer people out of a, a, a out of a, an area yeah. to, to bring in um richer people and all this sort of thing um there's a word for it and it's, it's eluding me it'll come back to me after this but that whole idea i thought was was a decent idea a decent playground to be playing in for a story yeah. obviously it didn't work out no but you know I, I thought and and robocop going against you know and sticking up for the normal people there, there's a decent idea in there but fundamentally flawed completely flawed films it's rubbish <laughs> yeah i mean the fact they obviously downsized it to be i think is it pg i want maybe say it was very kid friendly and for some reason i feel like the person who did the animated tv series had a hand in this because if, if you watch it they're like there's so many gimmicks they give to robocop like he's take his hand off and he's got this like machine gun yeah attachment and even in the first scene he like puts it on and rather than opens the door blows a hole in his squad car to get out the top and i was like that's right that's want and damage doesn't that go against his prime directive because he's just destroyed the police car just no, the word out that, it. gentrification that's the word I'll yeah, say. Yeah. gentrification good story gentr no you're right and I, I remember seeing this film for the first time and my first viewing of this film was actually on a pirate Okay, no. Because I'm sure it would have come out in America way before we got it out over here in the UK. If I'm, but it was a pirate regardless, whatever way the release dates went. Um, and I remember it, it again, a very sluggish film, not very, you know, um, it, it just it, it doesn't flow very well at mm. all, and it just seems like forever until Robocop turned up in the film. Yeah, yeah. All I was waiting for was Robocop. Where's Robo? And it just seemed to take ages until you actually got Robocop in it. I don't know if that's still the case, if that's just my... Because my, this is one of the least, probably least watched Robocop projects for me. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, when you say about it, it's funny because when you look at initial costs, so when I mentioned, obviously, Robocop 1, it's made 100 million now. Uh, if you go off I, um, Wikipedia costs, actually Robocop 3 did better than 2. It made like 25 million. It made 10 million more at the things than 2 did, but it's still regarded as a worse movie. So there must be more costs involved that, that they don't that's calculate. The, that's probably the PG element. Yeah, very could be. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree what you say. I mean, even re-watching it now like i like the look of the jetpack but as soon as he puts it on i'm like that looks dreadful and then he yeah. kind of flies in blows up a few people and that's it job done yeah and it's yeah last yeah. like saying, sorry just saying that because obviously in in a juxtapose this with robocop 2 robocop 2 did keep with the violence the uber violence yeah but the one thing they couldn't get right in either of these was the sort of satirical humour, even though they they did attempt it, they did try. Mm. But sorry, yeah. you're saying yes. Yeah, so the jetpack flies in, swoops in, blows up. Yeah, it's, it's a five minute. It's a one. It's a yeah. One done. and done. Yeah, basically, it's. And I mean, even like the bad guy, I didn't find it. Just it, the. I mean, the guy who plays the old man, he didn't return because he didn't like the script. So you've got then the Rip Torn who plays the CEO, and I say we're killing Nancy off. Um, Nancy off. Um, and Lewis and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. It's you like you're ripping away more. I mean, it, like we said with um, two, it feels like they just rip away elements that actually work for Robocop, you know, to have his partner and that and just now let's get rid of her. When I felt she had time in the beginning to shine, I thought when she's chasing them, I thought, oh, this is going to be really good. And then, like, oh no, she gets stuck. And then it was, I think, the. Um, probably hindsight of watching too many movies it's when she goes out with him and that random cop's like 
don't want your body armor and she's like i'm off duty i'm like yeah well, that's not really cop like is it yeah yeah <laughs> Well, that'll come back to bite you. Uh, didn't you learn from the first movie when you got shot twice with your body armor on, trying to help Murphy out? <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, that's one of my least visited RoboCop um, projects. This one, <laughs> no, no. I mean, I can see. It. I mean, I do enjoy one. I say it's a shame that obviously two and three ended up, but we still got more to talk about. So there is. Oh no, but you got the um, obviously with this one, you had the the the, the sort of. Um, the Asian martial arts robots yeah. at the end as well. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, I thought bringing in the androids was a good idea, but how it was executed was really bad. I mean, they, I mean, I, I'm all much for practical effects, but I don't know why the guys didn't look like probably, um, what's the Arnold Schwarzenegger one where he goes to Mars? I'm trying to think. Total um, Recall. Total Recall. And like where people have bionic bits on them. I don't know why they didn't bring those elements in. I know the director wanted to have more martial arts stuff than he did. But even the scene that's in where he's just flipping over him and just kicking him. I'm like, if that was Robocop, surely he'd be like, from walk through the door, track him and go, there. that's where he's going to be. Shoot him, he's dead. Mm. Or get his bazooka arm or whatever. <laughs> I'm sure he's got an attachment on it for something. Um, but yeah, like, like you, a few good elements, but yeah, not not the best executed. Um, no. no, it's not. But it, yeah, but okay. Shall we swiftly move on to the live action series now? So I don't care what Daisy. Yes, yeah, so I've actually got two versions of this. I did have three. <laughs> But you gave me one. So I am very, as I say, I forgot all about, I literally forgot all about this and I plugged it on and just the 90s of me as a kid on a Saturday night watching Sky One with my dad brought this all back, um, which I I now have massive, massive fond memories of this. So, so that's, um, good. that's, good. that's um, good. So how do you feel about the road? Since so this was your okay, you may have forgotten about it until you rewatched yeah. it, and it brought back all these memories. So how do you, how do you feel about the franchise at this point, given that this was your or the cartoon series, then this was your first introduction to it, then going back and seeing the uber violent first film, because a lot of people, you know, you've got that that desensitization going on yeah. from the films you know as the films went on into the series and this sort of a thing whereas you've come at it from a, a desensitized robocop into uh, an uber violent robocop so how how does that impact your overall okay so this, this is this is kind of what i was foreshadowing at the very beginning of this so please don't hate me i mean I would class this, and it is very marsable, as my favourite version of RoboCop. Now, I mean, this, and this is what I was saying, for me, like, this is my favourite, but it is probably like 0. 0.0001, and the reason why I say this is because I understand that without RoboCop 1, without the RoboCop 1, this wouldn't have existed. You know, I like, I really like the guy who plays RoboCop in this and all the stuff that's done. Yeah. But I say, just very fraction behind it is Robo RoboCop One because I really, you know, coming back and watching it, I really enjoy it. I say the fact of the realization of him getting blown apart and the realize and you relating more to him. The fact of you have Kurtwood Smith, who I like from that seventy show, seeing him as like the bad guy and stuff, and all these characters how they work together is such a really good story. Which is why obviously I spent the money and bought this. And, yeah. and enjoyed, you know, sitting there for five hours. I did it all in one night and thoroughly enjoyed it. And I could have probably watched it twice if it wasn't that late. Um, but yeah, I, I very much do, it, it, you know, enjoy the movie and can really appreciate everything. And, uh, you know, Peter Weller is Robocop, and without him, we wouldn't have had this. So that's why it's very much, very much fractionally behind it but because of obviously i would say nostalgia probably edges this for me but that's just 
obviously my personal one. But I mean, so, you, you notice yeah. that there are very much differences. So obviously, as I said, Peter Weller moves with his chest and then his head. And this guy doesn't. He does it the other way around. He moves with his head. There's stuff like this that you notice. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so for me, so obviously, uh, yeah, I, I was there when when the, the, the TV series came yeah. out, and like you, yeah, Sky, I'd watch it, Sky One, and um, I loved it. I, I, I loved the TV series. It, like I said, I like the franchise anyway, or the IP, and and for me, again, as I said, the only way, if you're t the only logical ways to take this show or to take this character forward really when you ain't got that emotional core to it is bigger bad a robot which mm. films did um, or attempted to do or you take it down a police procedural route which is what robocop the tv series did with the sci-fi elements thrown in and all this and 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 it, it was dialed down it is it, it, it's very it's almost very tongue in cheek, right? Yeah. Especially where the villains are concerned and this sort of a thing. Obviously, we don't have no Anne Lewis. We have um, the actress' name's Yvonne Niper, I think, or something like yeah. that. Like, yeah, you know. So um, there was legal reasons why they couldn't use certain characters and all this so, sort of stuff. So that was a question I wanted to ask you. Sorry, we're going to cut in here. So obviously Orion owns Robocop and still own Robocop to this day. Mm. And they helped produce the TV series. So I'm not quite sure how. I, I haven't got the answer to that as to why they couldn't. Okay. I just know that there was reasons why they couldn't. And I'm not I sure. I thought it might be down to, um, uh, what's his name, Ed Newmeyer and Michael Miner. Because they created it, they had... Quick, I, although it, it, although you'll find that they 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 i think they i think if i remember rightly i wish i'd done some homework now i'm sure <laughs> an episode of robocop the tv show the hour and a half episode is has got them involved or is yeah so there's a ten, by the yeah there's a so there's a 10 minute featurette on the first two episodes which are done as a film and the way it, it comes across is like they were making a TV movie and mm. then it seems to have been spawned into a series because I assume it did quite well. But yeah, they, they originally wrote it from what I read of the featurette and then there was creative or well, issues with copyright and stuff and then they got the guys in to help them out, whether that helped obviously with the, the yeah. as you say, the one and a half hour special or the, the movie or the... Well, or well the, back then it was it was a... It was a it was a very common practice for for TV shows to have an hour and a half pilot. Yeah, you go back and you see things like um, Sequest, um, uh, Lois and Clark: New Adventures of Superman, Babylon yeah. Five, the Star Trek series. Everything had an hour and a half filmic pilot episode. So that that was yeah that was a just a done thing back then yeah. um, to get people to watch kind of thing have a feature film i mean actually i remember my my first actual <laughs> again going to the pirate side of things i went down to the, the store the video store and obviously they the vhs store and they used to have the behind the counter stuff yeah. right right the pirates and they had robocop 4 Okay. robocop 4 robocop 4 being the pilot episode of of the tv show Okay. Um, so obviously I rented it, and that was how I mean I knew it was the pilot episode of the TV show. I knew there wasn't a Robocop four. I knew yeah. that it was it was a TV show pilot. And um yeah, I mean, okay, I know that, that everything's dialed down, the violence is like, you know, less you know, I'm not gonna shoot you, but I'll shoot that chandelier to land on you. Yeah, or I'll shoot the leg of that that wardrobe to fall on you and, and <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> You've got the you've got the villain in it, the one with these Pud Face Morgan. Face, yeah. Yeah. Who who you could essentially think is that same guy from the first Robocop film who goes into the acid. Yeah, Emil, ain't it? Uh yeah. Paul Paul McCann from That's I remember it. from ER, but yeah. Yeah, you could <laughs> I only know because I've got them all written down. But yeah, you, yeah, I I thought the exact same thing. Him. 
Yeah. Having it's survived a... that. <laughs> but, you know, I have a lot of fun with the Robocop show. I like the 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 the, the ghost idea, the, the you know, the girl in the mainframe. Yeah. Um, you know, the little kids not overly annoying. Gotcha, I yeah. Feel. Um I, I think it's a you know it, it, for me it was a shame it didn't go any further than I mean I know we got films after but yeah. unlinked but it's a shame it didn't go any further than the first season. I I, I really enjoy it. hence why I ended up with three copies of it. No. It's just no, I, I mean I I say you've rewatch it. I loved it. The fact I didn't even realise it, it was out and it brings back memories is fun. I mean, it, it cost over a million per episode, so that there is a budget, I think, from what I can see online, that's why it got cancelled, just because it was so much money to make. Yeah. It, how do you quantify making money on a TV series? Unfortunately, it's a bit hard, especially when I think there's no UK release of the TV series, it's all other markets. No, there is that's that's the UK. Oh, is that the UK one? Uh, okay. Yeah, we got it over here. Um, so initially, I found it in Germany like that. Okay. Um, this version here, which is um, uncut and remastered, apparently. But it's it's literally only on... It, it's on one disc. It's all condensed down onto one disc, you know. Um, and then the, the version that I, I sent your way was another version that then came out in germany after which i've got mm. very cheap um it went right down in price eventually and i thought oh you know uh, i don't know i just silly i know but it's that love of the series and then yeah. we when we got it out over here it almost looked like it wasn't coming out because it kept getting delayed and pushed back yeah. and pushed back and it probably came out about a year ago maybe a little bit longer um mm. it finally got released and it is spread over two discs i keep meaning to do a a, a sort of side by side as to whether there's any difference in the picture quality. I don't. I, I don't think there probably is. Um, I believe it was released in the states as well. They got the TV series also released over there. Um, and I used to have it on. I'm sure I had it on VHS, not yeah. VHS, on DVD. Yeah. Tried the series on DVD at one point, um, or at least some of it. And yeah, for me. You know, I, I've got a lot of love for the TV series. Um, I can understand the psychology of people because it, it's, it's funny and it, it kind of like um, doesn't annoy me, but it, it's kind of like people that they need this. I don't think everything needs the violence. I don't think everything needs the bad language, you know, mm -hmm. I, I I don't think the character like just just a little aside. I don't think Deadpool needs to be as uber violent as what it is the films, mm. and I don't think Deadpool needs to be as as um, um, sweary as what it is. Yeah, if yeah. if they toned Deadpool down for the Marvel universe, I would have been fine with it. Reason being is because I know Deadpool from the comics. Exactly, yeah. And Deadpool wasn't sweary. It wasn't, you know, like what it is in the film. But people have this 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 kind of image in the head that, you know, it's, it's kind of like a young kid watching something. You know, it's like a young kid saying, oh, well, I'm not watching that because it's not... Um, I mean, I used to have it with my kids. I used to have it with my kids when they'd say to me, well, what's the age rating? What's it rated? And I'd say, well, it's a 12A. And they're like, well, I'm not interested. Well, why not? Because it's not an 18. What the hell does that matter? <laughs> yeah, what's the relevance of that? Well, it ain't as violent, it ain't as sweary. So I can handle Robocop with that stuff taken out. I could handle Deadpool with that stuff removed. You can still do it. It can still be done. But, but but people have this, oh, it needs to be violent. I need to see blood splatter. I need to see uber violence. And I need to hear profanity throughout. Okay, well, I don't need uber violence and I don't need profanity. I can handle it without. No, no. I, um, I would totally agree. I mean, I, I, mean, I get I, that 
I, I, don't get me wrong. Sorry, I'll let you, I, I understand that it's not RoboCop. I understand it's not. It, it's it's no RoboCop's. You know, if I was doing a top ten, top twenty film list, I'm sure RoboCop would make it. I'm sure the sequels would be nowhere in my top couple of hundreds. Do you know what I mean? It, it's, yeah. it's like, and I get that these. You know, for me, RoboCop the movie is is the definitive RoboCop. But for me, I think the TV series comes in second. No, no, well, I, I, that's what I would assume. I mean, I, I, I could get that. I mean, I know why they, they took it out for a team series. And I say this is where you read online and you go online and there are so many people who it's either it ain't got violence in it, I'm not watching the TV series. But every other review of the TV series that I've read, almost all of them are like, actually, this is when you give it a chance, it's actually really good. It's actually really fun. And I think mm. this is... I don't know this it kind, of, it kind of matches with my mindset of movies i'm very much as you can know i've got like what four and a half thousand almost and it's like if you spend your time going well i'm only want to watch the movies at really good ratings or that it kind of dilutes your view in pleasure and you kind of get fixated and that that what is essentially say like if you rate your oh, man's on it so if you say rated zero ten and you're watching movies that are in this section then they all kind of then spread themselves apart and then it's it, you don't yeah, yeah. kind of appreciate movies as much you just assume they're all really really good when that's not the case and you miss out on so much yeah i mean it's the same when you know you had the 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 release of alien versus predator the first one being a 12a people were kicking off that it was a 12a mm. okay and yeah what does that mean what does that mean you know, you're not going to get the violence when, when your violence is um, a, a monster or monster. I know there's human element to it. When your violence is monster or monster, you don't warrant that that rating. You don't warrant that age rating. But like yeah. I said, I know Robocop would completely tone down. He doesn't shoot anyone. It's always other, you know, and he, he has these other gadgets and things like that. And um, But it's a fun show, and the, yeah, you said the geezer who plays RoboCop in this far better than the geezer who played it in RoboCop Three. Totally, totally, um, probably the second best person to play RoboCop. Um, yeah, it, it was. Yeah, I, I've got no issue with the TV show. I'm always a defender of the TV show RoboCop. Part of it is because of the era, right? Yeah. The mid '90s for me was I was younger, and it's probably the same sort of era for comics as me, where comic books were, you know, my my high of, of the height of my comic book collecting and my favourite era of comic books, and probably like my favourite era of TV because you'd had RoboCop, you had Sea Quest, you had um, Babylon Five, you had Star Trek: Deep Space Nine, you had Highlander. You know what I mean? It was suit Lois and Clark: New Adventures of Superman. It was it was this 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 rich era of TV that that you don't get now. I know TV shows have improved in in their um, in writing in um, visual visually and all this, but for me it was that sort of magical era that fell as part of that. You know. And yeah, uh, I would um, totally agree. And shameless plug, obviously, for AJ. If you do like aliens and stuff, him and Matt have done a two and a quarter hour talk about all, everything and anything aliens, which is quite interesting. So, and it doesn't really spoil Romulus. So, please feel free to go and check that out. Yes, that's over on Matt's channel, but you yeah. can link it through mine. Yeah. Um, but also, likewise for Chris, uh, Matt and Chris done um, Matrix. Yeah, a Matrix channel. So, all about all those all those Matrix films. Yeah. So you can go and check that out on Chris's channel. <laughs> Thank you very much for the plugs. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Just and I believe you're doing Back to the Future as well. Hopefully, I'm waiting for Matt to confirm. So, is um, yeah, I'm sure. I'll wait. yeah, I'm sure he will. So, just a few big Commander Cash, obviously from the yeah. So they did release some figures, which funny, and then obviously uh, Sergeant Park. And then, as you said, the kind of Anne Lewis knockoff Hannigan. Yeah, which I liked. I liked her. She was yeah. all right. Yeah, I, 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 I'm like you too. I, I thought she was really good in the role. It was yeah. quite a, again. I thought that could have been an like because he went did the wife and the child, which was nice to not 
haven't aged as it comes up later yeah i thought she was good as a kind of companion for him or like a sister mm. in the human side of things yeah um, yeah random side random side thing because you reminded me about lois and clark so you meant <laughs> sorry people we're gonna this next <laughs> few minutes is gonna go completely on tangent because it was something i meant to talk to aj so i watched something the other day you know we were speaking about lois and clark and i think you i can't remember where you mentioned it but you mentioned about um obviously the death of superman yeah and i found out the other day that basically because um the people who own the rights to superman stopped making superboy and did lois and clark but when they did lois and clark they didn't want them to get married straight away and that was the plan that was in the comics that's so right. that's why they, that's why they killed superman because of lois and clark i don't yeah. know if you ever knew that i, did, I said it in the video the other day you said it in the video i can't remember if you said it yeah, I remember... yeah. I, i'm sure i said it in the video the other day i can't remember right. if you they referenced had... it to that tv series because i was like oh okay yeah they needed to fill a year because they wanted to coincide the the marriage of superman to um they wanted to coincide the marriage of superman in the comics to the tv show yeah so and they they that's so that's postponed the marriage in the comics and they they had a year to fill and i, I don't it might have been in that it might have been in the video where i've done the opening for doomsday I, maybe, actually, you, I remember you speaking about it. I say, I remember us speaking about it, and I couldn't yeah. remember if you said, and I happened, just happened to yeah. watch it, Lois. And as we talk about 90s stuff, I happened to watch quite a few documentaries of late online about, and Lois and Clark came up and they mentioned that. And I was like, Oh, did AJ mention that? I cannot, I'll have to mention it to him. And you just said that. And that's, I was like, I have to tell yeah, you now, was, otherwise I'll forget. Was, uh, yeah, which was a, it was a good revived the sales of Superman. Yeah. Why, or at it, least. <laughs> yeah. All right. It, it did well enough. Um, Shall we move on? Right. As we... Yeah, Robocop. Sorry about that. <laughs> you can skip the past. Stay on target. Yeah. Stay on target. Stay on Chris. Stay on... Yeah. Nice and Clark wrote. So, so <laughs> shall we, as we've done, obviously, the TV series 94. So then, obviously, we had the seven year gap and then got this, which was also get. See, unfortunately, AJ is rewoken so much stuff. So, obviously, gifted me this as well. So, this was what I first watched when he gave it to me. I thought this was the. Which is four TV movies about an hour and a half long. Oh yeah, or is... yeah, I've got five there. Okay, oh. the reason. Let me just say the reason why. Obviously, they they made these. I think these were Sci-Fi Channel things, hmm. and and they were called Prime Directives, Robocop Prime Directives, yeah. which was an attempt to take on TV as TV films with zero budget. Robocop back to its sort of darker roots. Yeah. Um, now I knew that these had been made. I had no way of seeing them, but I can, I've still got it. I came to find out that in France, they'd released a DVD called Robocop 2001, okay. which as soon as I saw that it had been released over there, somehow I managed to get it. It did, obviously, it had English um, language on it. And um, so what this was, was the, the very first, that very first one, Dark Justice. I mean, look, you've got blood down him, do you know what I mean? They're trying to sort of make out that it's, you know, back to the violence and that sort of a thing. So, yeah, so, so they, they made these four Robocop movies. Um, so you've got you have Dark Justice, um, Meltdown. Meltdown. Resurrection, and then Crash and Burn. So hour and a half each. So another four Robocop films there. Um, they're very cheap. So <laughs> what's your take on them? Because you've recently you've recently watched them. Um, you yeah, never so seen this... them before. Did you think that the you thought these came before the TV show? Is that right? No, no, no. So I, I knew they came in the 2000s. Uh, we have overlooked Alpha Command, but we'll go back to that. But um, yeah, this was kind of, I've so apart from the 2014 movie and watching the odd Robocop 1, when you gave me everything, this was the kind of first jumping back on board of watching everything. <laughs> Whether that is right or wrong, I was like, 
a 22 episode series this is a lot quicker to get through even though it's six hours um it's very formulaic i found um <laughs> if you watch it there's very much of uh about an hour story and then let's fry all the explosions and everything in like the last half an hour and there are a few i mean getting rid of van lewis and bringing in john cable i wasn't too bothered about but then turning him into a robocop quite early on and it's the only way i can describe it is or this series is in the ending scene to the first movie where you have this bloke who has this big suit and these big machine guns has john cable pointed at his head and the bad guy takes off his gloves <laughs> and then kind of grabs a grenade and sticks it next to him and then robocop kind of shoots him in the arm and then john's dead at the same time and i was like that's that makes no logical sense at all to me. I was like, if you've got these guns in your hands, you would just mowed everybody down. But I know it's a TV movie. I say, and I understand what they would go in for. I mean, the fact they age up his son and they've kind of got the OCP, but the kids are kind of trying to rebel against it. I mean, for me, I was hoping because they mentioned this kind of computer system, I was hoping we would ha kind of have an evil computer system that then unfortunately gets programmed into this robot and that's where it was going. But it, as you said, with budget and stuff, I just couldn't think it, it they couldn't realize it and they have kind of several things going off. And apart from the guy getting his legs cut off at the end, wasn't really the best. <laughs> Uh, have you noticed how tall the guy who plays Robocop is or isn't? I, I, no, to be honest, I didn't notice that. I think the, <laughs> I mean, the only noticeable one for me was Robo, sorry, we're going to go back, is Robocop 3. So well, obviously, when we mentioned Peter Weller wasn't able to do it, and they brought somebody else in. But the guy is far bigger. So when you watch Robocop 3, he's like neck bits here and then his helmets here and there's like this massive gap where you can almost see like a balaclava kind of sticking out which i thought was funny yeah, yeah. but no i didn't yeah. notice it in this that, uh, yeah the scenes uh, where he's you know uh, um especially the kid geezer who plays his son is about a foot taller than him yeah so we've got robocop himself looking like this tiny tiny yeah. person and you know robocop in, in your mind should be bigger and imposing do you know what i mean not yeah. not this tiny little stunted stunted kind of um and that's what yeah um that's what you get now yeah it's a very cheap series and if i'm not wrong is the geezer called bone crusher the bad guy um if i recall but what i will say about this show is that at least it moved robocop himself forward in the sense that they treated Robocop like he was a person and not the robot. Yeah. You know, like, so if you go on from that first film, if you look at these as a continuation from that first film, where he's become Murphy at the end, that there's a lot more emotion to him as the robot of, of Robocop. There's bits where he, he develops anger and things like this. Um, he, he's, he's more humanly em emotional, yeah. And really, that's that's the the. It's a shame that those films, as as cheap as they are, are the ones that that kind of got that that element correct. Hmm. Oh, you know. I, can, I can definitely see. I mean, it's kind of the the, the time loop, ain't it? The TV series, I think was three years from the first movie this obviously series is 10 years obviously it starts off with him having a birthday which i thought yeah. was quite a bit funny because they're all like yeah and he's just sitting there like i've got crime to sort out <laughs> and and you, you got all the flashbacks to him and john cable john, haven't you yeah. when he was his partner sort of thing and you know so, so it did do it done some good stuff in in the in, in in the characterization of of Murphy, it done some it, it done some good stuff and had some good ideas. Mm. It just didn't have the budget to to um, no execute that. No, no, no. I, yeah. I mean, I could definitely see that. Say, I mean, 
for what they did, it wasn't too bad in the grand scheme of things. I've seen, well, I've seen a lot worse, but yeah. As I mean, it feels far on, cheaper than the TV show. Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, I, I so, don't know the budget actually of what it was, but I mean, yeah, definitely weren't a million per episode. <laughs> yeah, it feels far cheaper. Um, but again, that you know, I can not often, but I can sit down and watch them. Mm. And I kind of jump to them more than I jump to Robocop 3, just because there's elements in there that that I wish that the other films had given us. Yeah. No, no I can um, definitely see that. And definitely, uh, I would say, I mean, I, I mean I've got them, even though I think they're bad, they're still in there and I still would revisit them. So it's not that bad on the on that grand scheme of things. Yeah, um, no. No, that's right. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, you know. But for me, Robocop the first film and the TV series is is primarily where it's at. No, I would agree. I mean, do you want to? Should we go back to Alpha Command? I I screwed up there, and I think Alpha Command was ninety eight, and we should have done that first. But yeah, I'm pretty sure most people watching this won't have seen our Robocop Alpha Command anyway. No, again, AJ didn't even know this existed until AJ presented to this. I mean, this is where I, I'm learning so much. He was like, oh, this is a second series. I was like, is there an animated series? And then, yeah, I've only seen the first five or six episodes. It's 40. Again, it's all on YouTube. So if you, you, you fancy watching it, feel free to go on YouTube. Obviously, you don't have adverts for it. So at least that's one thing. Yeah, I don't know where. I don't know. I've got everything in front of me. I don't know where I've put them. No, you did, you did show it a minute ago. I don't oh, did. <laughs> But I mean, have you seen it? Do you remember it? Do you recall anything from it? I I, 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 I don't recall it. I know it's for a more futuristic set and all that sort of a thing. Um, but no, if you've watched the first three episodes, your or first five episodes, you'll have more um, be able to talk about it more than me. Yeah, essentially, it is the future. Murphy's been frozen. Basically, a, a new female cop unfors him and then they go and fight crime that's that's kind of the story across it he's very much a bit more laid back murphy so he cracks jokes he's a little bit <laughs> not quite the one and he seems to be inspector gadget like as well because he's got anything from missile launchers to extendable arms yeah. to all this stuff and it's uh like yeah, apart from looking like Robocop, they could have just gone with a probably different design <laughs> in my eyes for this. I mean, from what I've watched, it's okay, but I wouldn't. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, don't know. I don't remember it that weird. well. Uh, not as well as the first one. For the life of me, right? I'm looking for my <laughs> my my copy, my two bootleg one. I don't know where they are. They're here. So wait a minute. No. They're here somewhere, and I can't bloody really find them. Oh, I know, I know. On the floor. Yeah, yeah, there we go, look. Yeah. There's Alpha Command, with that big yeah. exaggerated... Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad, not a bad like, idea of going for it. I mean, it, it got 40 episodes, so the fact in 2001 to get 40 episodes is quite, quite That's right, an yeah. achievement. So, I mean, maybe if I watch it longer or finish it off, it will, um, it will come into its own. But yeah, I think from everything that I've seen, Robocop, it's 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 quite far far away from what we know of Murphy and something, and even like his. Yeah, I mean, like I think the last episode I watched, a kid was scared of him and didn't want to hold his hat, didn't want to get out, out of a van because he was quite scary and he has kind of an, an emotional breakdown of like everybody thinks he's not, you know, he's too scary being the cop he is, but. Yeah, it is what it is. I think it's there. Uh... Yeah, it's uh, my. Own <laughs> about it. It's not. It's not a go-to for me. No. But Shall it's still we... part. Of the, it still forms part of the collection. Of course, I say it's anything and everything. I mean, shall we move on to the final PS? Well, I don't know if it's a PS resistance, but um. Still, well, that. So, yeah, obviously I started off with that. And this is the only kind of movie outside of what is my top five or ten movies that I actually have two copies of. I do yeah, like I, do, I do have the Steelbook as well. 
Yeah, as AJ, AJ was there, obviously, when I bought this, so he knows that it, it yeah. went into. And I mean, this is this is one of these movies where I say I have to thank AJ for, for wanting to do Robocop because I was very much in the beginning, I was like, well, they just it wasn't violent enough. It just wasn't violent. That's why it didn't work. And now having watched everything, I actually have to re revoke that comment. I don't think the violence was the issue with this movie. I think it was a lot of other elements, personally. The thing is, with this film, right, you've got, you know, you've got such a cast, right? You've got Joel Kinnaman. He, he's good in himself, for anyone. But, you know, you've got Sam Jackson. You've got Michael Keaton. You've got Gary Oldman. You've got, um, oh, what's his name? Plays Rorschach in The Watchmen. Fred yeah, it's the... Um, get Hayley Joel. No, that's the kid. <laughs> <laughs> Name Christ, something Haley in it, Haley something or whatever. Anyway, yeah, you got him in it. Um, you know, th this film's got a, a, a solid, solid cast. So when you heard initially, oh, there's a Robocop remake, all right. First of all, I don't feel Robocop needs a remake, yeah, right. I'll say that. Um, it needs a sequel, a good sequel doesn't need a remake and you know that that design you know that looks like a man in a suit yeah he looks like a man in a suit right whereas you could say the same for robocop because he's bulky but when he takes when when he takes his mask off it's like he's covering him yeah yeah you know? it's like oh i've got a head paint. when robocop takes his his mask off it, it, it's, it looks like his face has been stretched over because it's bigger, it becomes bigger. Yeah. It's been stretched over this this robotic face. Um, yeah, you, and like I said, you go back to the design, the initial design of Robocop. There's no way that you can improve upon that. Mm. I don't care what you say. There's nothing you can do to that Robocop design to make it better. So you're, you're off to a losing start straight away. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting how they kind of turned it on its head. The the whole, um, like, obviously in RoboCop, when he's fired up as RoboCop, he's a robot. He doesn't remember anything mm. in his life. And it's his, his, his journey to rediscovery. But in that film, when they switch him on as RoboCop, he's himself with with all those memories so you know okay they've done something a bit different there could work as interesting um but yeah um yeah it's been some time since i've visited that film i'll be honest no no i think it i think i sort of bought what this last year when i was with you and that in what, peterborough must have been with matt yeah I think I picked this up. So that was when I ran about the time I watched this. It's probably been about a year, give or take. I mean, yeah, as you say, a, a, a great, great cast. Um, and yeah, as I say, I was initially like, oh, it's violence, it's violence, it's not. And I say, this is revisiting. I mean, I think him getting blown up. And yeah, as you say, then he reawakens. I mean, having the hand and the lungs seemed a bit pointless. Mm. for a robot if you're making a robot why would you give him lungs and that and yeah like the original it's just his memory and his face or his memory is in there but he doesn't know it yet because obviously they've wiped everything yeah. um i did like the stealth suit um mm. but again this gets into the thing that you appreciate the original robocop because he is a robot whereas you watch joel kinnaman in the suit and it's almost like he's superman almost you know he does massive yeah. jumps and stuff like this and it's like it i think it, it kind of leans more towards the superhero element or the, mm -hmm. rather than the robot side of things and i think that's one of the points that was missed the same of having a partner with lewis in the original movie you, you know you have these people that ground that character and yep. learning of murphy's death and what Anne had to go through to watch it and stuff there's all this that then you know and you have this evil kind of feeling that obviously kurt wood smith's characters killed him and that's that's kind of what wakes him up whereas in this one it's like well i got blown up i just want to figure out who's done that 
Mm-hmm. And that, and it, it, yeah, it just go. As you say, it is, it is a shame because it has such a big cast. And I mean, he, even the uh, robot, the bad guy robots, I weren't too sold on. I mean, they were kind of Ed two hundred nine style. That's right. Yeah. But not, it's kind of, as I say, it, it almost, someone had the idea like the first movie, of like, like, like we have this OCP bad guy, Michael Keaton, he's the main bad guy, but then you've kind of got Rosham, who's kind of just an arsehole to him, for a, <laughs> kind of, but then you've got these evil robots for him to fight as well, and it, it, it's no real clear enemy in my eyes, I mean they even mentioned the beginning in like, it's is it Third World, there's like Saudi Arabia or somewhere where you've got the yeah, crew the military actually yeah robots and there's, even, there. there's even that i get that for the year 2000 side of things but i was like you're kind of bringing the political side of it and then it's not really mentioned again yeah um yeah robocop the first one the, the the actual idea of robocop you know far more grounded in 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 reality and in, in in the 80s you know with like I said, with with the Reagan administration, with how corporations were at that time, um, the the rundown cities, do you know what I mean? All this sort yeah. of stuff, that, that um, rejuvenation of cities, uh, you know, and, it, and it's far more clever a script. Like I mm. said, with the the whole element of, you know, these police police officers are just being, you know, psychologically profiled and and moved to areas where there's a far more higher far, far more risk high percentage death rate so that they do get killed so that we can put them into these sort of programs and experiment on them in yeah. and try and turn them into the next level of, of law enforcement you know it's it's far it's, it's a lot it's subtler in what it does but far more cleverer in its in its backstory and this sort of a thing yeah and yeah it's it's you know it's it's yeah uh, it's a letdown of a, like I said, it's a film that one of those ones I look at and think it wasn't ever needed. It's a remake that wasn't required. No, no. I mean, as I say, I, I like Joel Kinnaman. I mean, it, as I say, I've got two copies of it, so I can't really say it's. No, it's, I've got, like I said, I've got two. I've got the same the, as you. Yeah. The worst movie out there. But yeah, you just, I don't know. Sometimes it, it it's hard in this day and age. And as you probably rightly said, like, back in the day there was all these creative elements that come together and as i mentioned on other live streams now unfortunately we are in a time where it's money it's it's we will make a movie if it's about a franchise that's already been done because we know 10 percent of the people you know will go to see it yeah it's, it's, it's that name recognition isn't it yeah and it, you know it's, it's, yeah and then that kind of spoils it because I think even like studios and executives, they get involved and stuff like this. And it just, I mean, as, as we like heard on, um, obviously Robocop three, they got involved and it screws stuff up and everything. And it's just, I get it. They're rare to make money, but with the way the movie world is, it's just like, I think you still need that creativity. You need that stuff because we do have a finite, amount of ideas out there and the more worse ones you get mm-hmm. we will get to a point where let's say if physical media does die streaming obviously that we're limited on content it gets limited and limited more cost goes up and obviously i think like phil with double l said obviously they get rid of movies and stuff and you'll just be limited with just a random rubbish yes. amount of stuff and that's all you'll have and that's not the way we really want it no, no, it's not. Not indeed. Sorry, that was a get on my high horse and rant. <laughs> rant so go out and buy Robocop. We don't care what version. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all the films and TV covered, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's it. We only then have comics now. which have Well, got... there's comics and there's other media as well. Oh, I suppose there's computer games as well, but I've not played the recent robocop game but i have heard it is very good well i still have um i i had robocop 2 on playstation 2 up till recently and i sold it <laughs> robocop robocop on playstation 2 yet yeah, and, and yeah. sold it and i do still have the sega mega drive robocop versus terminator game okay i Which still I'll have see. that <laughs> <wrong> <laughs> yeah i've got um 
so that's from Dark Horse Comics. Yeah, um, that's the one. It was a four issue. It was a four because obviously I was collecting comics at this time. It was a four issue mini series that was that was um, that was conceived. That's issue two. These are obviously the American releases. Issue three and issue four there um, with a sort of jetpack. <laughs> um, you know, you even had cut out things inside. Look, I don't know say. Oh, you yeah. Cut yeah. Out Robocop <laughs> and stand him up. Um, and interestingly, obviously, these are written by Frank Miller. <laughs> yes, it is. Writer of Robocop, uh, or part writer of two and Robocop two and three. Um, Robocop versus Terminator, yeah, which does culminate in Terminator esque. So, I don't know how far your one takes you, but it does. I've only got episode one and two, so I had the first half. Yeah, I mean, it was, in it was interesting. I mean, it when you logically think, like, they've just if anybody who has it out there, they basically take the story of Terminator, but basically, Robocop is kind of the catalyst that causes robots to become more sentient and thus take over the world. Yeah. So then they're tasked to go back and try and stop him. It's um it was that time, okay. So so with the comics, obviously, you know, um as I said, one of my first forays into Robocop was was the movie adaptation comic book from from Marvel. And Marvel did do comic book adaptations for Robocop and Robocop 2, which is that one that is like a prestige format um, in colour, unlike the, where it's reprinted into black and white. Yeah. Um, I think the Rob, if I'm remembering a lot rightly, I want to say the Robocop 3 movie adaptation was done by Dark Horse Comics because initially Robocop rights were purchased by marvel comics who done a a robocop run um of about i think there's about 22 issues um i say that because i've only got 17 of them here okay um so this was published by marvel comics no team ups no team ups with um with other characters or anything like that but yeah it, you know, it's sort of standard Marvel fare. Um, for its time, it was, you know, you know, I enjoyed these these comic books. They were, again, it was that time when, for me, comics were, um, well, it was my, my golden era of collecting comics, shall we say. Yeah. Um, so then after that, um, the comics moved on to, to Dark Horse. Dark Horse comics being, um, as you know, Dark Horse, as you probably know, Dark Horse kind of cemented itself by getting all of these properties, all these licenses. So they'd done Aliens, they'd done Predator, they'd done Star Wars, Terminator, they'd done Robocop, you know, um, the Abyss movie adaptation was done by them. Obviously, they had, had other um, characters in there in the fold, like Hellboy and things like that, that were um, um, create our own type of things. But for the most part, Dark Horse came about um, getting a lot of licenses with Aliens and Rob with Aliens and Predator. They they may they retained the licenses all the way up to the 20th Century Fox mm. buyout by Disney. And thusly, them them falling and Star Wars as well, and then fall them falling under Disney. But RoboCop and Terminator itself, um, they didn't retain the rights to for for too long. The rights for them kept bouncing around between different comic companies. But at the time of that, from Dark Horse, they had the rights to both the RoboCop and Terminator franchises, and like where they could do. Aliens versus Predator. They could do Terminator versus Robocop, and I think there is actually a. I, I may be thinking wrong here. I'm sure there's an Alien, Predator, Terminator crossover as well. 
where all these I don't know if Robocop I don't think Robocop's part of that. I'm sure there's an aliens predator terminator where they all cross into one. But yeah, so that, that came about obviously written by Frank Miller, which is quite interesting really that you know Frank Miller being who he is. Yeah. Wrote a a Robocop versus Terminator comic for Dark Horse. I don't know if I've got any other Dark Horse stuff here. Um no, I haven't. I haven't. So, oh no, I have. So I've got one called um, Robocop Prime Suspect, which again is a four issue mini series from Dark Horse. Um, generally, they've done several four, yeah, four issue mini series, four issue mini series, that kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, and at the beginning, this before we started, I, I mentioned that it also went to Boom Studios and Dynamite. Yeah. But one thing that I I forgot between that was Avatar, a comic called Avatar, okay. a comic, comic company called Avatar. Um, and they released Frank Miller's Robocop. Okay. And what that actually is, is based upon the script of the original, what would have been the original Robocop 2 story. Okay. That's Robocop as Frank Miller told it. I can't really remember the ins and outs of it. It's been a while. Um, but yeah, it, it was a... How many issues was it? I think it was about eight issues. Yeah, the final issue is all... Look, I've got it all right. Metallic stuff Ooh. like that. A lot of them came when I got these. Were actually limited editions. And they came with... Um, certificates inside so that particular one only eight, 800 copies were were made of it simply because of the that's just to do with the silver yeah cut foil printing, yeah, same yeah. with that first one there with the silver on the the robocop title but yeah so this was based upon frank miller's original script from um for the film that never got made so it's an interesting insight into that what 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 robocop could have been um and i mean i've done some other non frank miller robocops under avatar as well um and then then you went to boom studios and with boom studios you had Again, Frank Miller gave you this Robocop called story called Robocop Last Stand, which um, is actually Robocop 3. Okay. As it would have been. been. Yeah. And interestingly, Kane actually comes Shows out of that oh. into this. The Kane oh. character, Robot, is in... in uh, in that rubber cop free. Um, yeah, so that's just another interesting do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, that's really cool. I say I've I, I say I've ordered that dynamite one, but yeah, it's unfortunately they're quite expensive to get out of now, like 30 or 40 quid a graphic novel. So I <laughs> that's why I, I cheaped out on the two issues yeah, like yeah. <laughs> Um and then obviously with under boom also they did do comics based uh, upon the, the newer Robocop. Um, these were all one-off. One okay. um, One-and-done stories. Um, you know, done about four of them. Yeah. Um, and then after that, they were taken to Dynamite. Now, yeah. the Dynamite Robocops, I think that's like the first two issues. I didn't go any further than that. Okay. With Robocop under Dynamite. But the character has been around loads of different um uh, loads of different publishers and that yes yeah. yes but those ones there from avatar press um I mean, i've got a lot more comics from them because they actually did publish just an aside um all this sort of stuff 
Okay, Freddie and Jason. Uh, ah, Metallic, Jason as well. Yes, they they published um, Elm Street, um, Night of the Living Dead, Species Comics, Jason X, Friday the Thirteenth. They got a hold of a lot of um, horror, horror esque stuff. Hmm. Yeah, so so comic wise, yeah, it, it's 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 had a quite a healthy. Um, I mean, there's no single specific run of comics. I would say to anyone will check that out or anything like that beyond the the Frank Miller's Robocop and Robocop Last Stand mm. to see what those films could have been. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, and obviously Robocop versus Terminator is a sort of, um, it's got that sort of um, thingy factor to it, you know, Um just that intrigue factor of joining these two franchises together yeah but standard robocop from marvel dynamite i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend them okay you know but certainly just them ones frank miller robocop no that's what's well, good it's obviously if you're watching this video and you're interested there you go aj's giving you some recommendations to search out yeah, probably... I don't know how hard they are to come by them comics or anything. I've got no idea what happens. I say when I was looking, it was a little expensive. I mean, if you have an o online, I'm not sure they do digital copies. It'll probably be far cheaper yeah. if you're down with that thing. Not for me. I'm more paper and but I'll yeah. No. I'm not. I'm not sure if they've done graphic novels of them after. I got no idea at all. No. How they went, but yeah, I think at the moment RoboCop's probably still floating around with dynamite. Okay, but I could be wrong. So one of them, I, I'm guessing the comics don't do particularly well, hence why they end up the licenses run out and go off elsewhere. Possibly, yeah. So it is a know. bit, yeah, maybe of a harder character to portray than a superhero or something. But yeah, like I said, because it's it's got to be treated like a superhero, really, mm. isn't it? And then I do have I do have that book there, which is the definitive history of. Robocop, and that does cover from literally from the films right the way through to that one. Okay, that's cool. To, so it does touch upon the TV series, a um, little bit about the comics. Do you know what I mean all that sort of stuff in there? No, that's a uh, sounds cool, interesting read. Yeah, I've got this. I think I picked this up in Finn Planet. What did it cost me? It's from Titan Books. 25 quid apparently <laughs> i'm sure you got apparently. a deal on it <laughs> but it was robocop so i had to get it it was about That's robocop it. so I, I couldn't resist that cool but yeah there we go there we go i say i think we've come to the end now so thank everybody for watching and thank again aj for joining me on this yeah. nice chat of, we'll have to have a think about what the next subject is <laughs> Absolutely. And let us know, obviously, down in the comments, what, um, what, what, well, what's your favourite Robocop? I mean, I'm Robocop one, obviously, but what do you <laughs> think the other, the other, the other spin-offs and franchise things that they've done? Let us know. Yeah, this should be airing hopefully Monday night at five. So yeah, if you're watching this Monday night or later, yeah, please do let us know. Obviously, maybe if we get enough comments, we can big it up to maybe a live, a small live stream or something to talk about it. Bring Matt in, see his perspective on it yes cool but otherwise okay. that i will end it there so thank you all for watching thank you